Everybody got to help everybody. I don't care how long it takes. Let's see. John never said, Jesus, I'm tired of this. That's right. Peter denied him, but not why he was with him. He didn't say, oh, Jesus, this is too much. I'm gone. No, he stuck with him. Why can't you stick with your bishop? Wow. Thank you, Lord. What you gonna do? Go home and watch TV? When the words of life is coming to you that can help somebody? Just by you hearing it, you're blessed to help somebody else. Yeah, thank you, Lord. But we get too tired. Let me tell you a trick. I'm about to close. I've been in ministry 24 hours. Y'all don't know that. I had to live in the ministry and I had to be there 24 hours for three years. Oh, yeah. I had to wake up in the morning, have mm -hmm. service, have service in the afternoon, have service at night, wake up again three in the morning and have service. Yes, Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. 24 hours all the time. And then I had to pray every hour yep. in the building. <laughs> yes, they did. That's why I'm so annoyed and smart because the presence of God came to me from being underground forever in the ministry. I love yeah. But if you, but I used to want to be falling to sleep and I used to be retired and they make you stand up and they make you walk around and they make you walk on your face. And then after a while, I said, I'm tired of them bothering me. I'm going to just stay up and hear the word. So when the enemy try to fan me to sleep, I fight it because I don't want to lose the word of God because it will help you 10 years later. Look at me now. Yeah. That was in 95, Ooh. 96, 97. Look at me now. Jesus. And then people say, now, I, I want to know the Bible like you do. Well, you should have been sleep, not sleeping like I wasn't. That's right. I left. Why am I so anointed? Why do I know so much? Because I didn't sleep in church. That's right. Thank you, Lord. I fought to sleep. Why are you up on here? I stay in church all night long because I love the Lord. I used to go to three, four services every Sunday. Every Sunday, morning, afternoon, evening, and at night when I get back home. And I wasn't, I loved it. That was my Sunday itinerary. But the Lord, I'm, I'm going to share this with you. The Lord showed me when I had my son that I can relax now because I put in my time. You don't want to put in no time, but you want to relax. Almost, almost a lot of churches out here know me. Because I went in for them. I went to them. People say, have you ever been to Hezekiah Walker Church? Yeah, I was there when they first opened. I was there for days, weeks, months, all the time. It just wasn't for me. Roy Brown, I've been there many times. Took him there. Nice church. Not for me. Central. Roy Brown on Central Avenue. Been there many times. Not for me. I've been all around the world. Of New York churches. Everywhere. But look where I'm at now. Where God want me to be. And you can't get there falling asleep or getting lax when it comes to ministry. This is important. We're learning about ministry in action. And ministry in action is important because you're going to have a ministry. You will not be here forever. I'm telling you, God is going to ordain you to open up your own ministry. And you're going to be having to stay up like me. With our coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but with the anointing and the Holy Ghost and the love of God to give his word. You know, there's some preachers that are preached for three, four hours. And kick you out if you go to sleep. You'll be no longer a member. And you got people in there that put pins on their eyes and stay open so they can be there. Because they want to be a member of that so-called sham organization. I like that. Sham organization. Catch the words. All right, we're closing. All right, we're closing. If the body, we did that, need extra arm or leg, you need to share it. Because the gift of God is for everybody. You got to share it with them. Because they... Because they are concerned about what others will say. Don't do that. 
Meanwhile, the other ministry is sinking and drowning because you have the anchor, but will not give it to that body of Christ that needs you. Common sense. You got the anchor to help this church to stop drowning or to stop sinking. But instead of you giving the anchor, you want them to drown and you sit back and watch it going down. Wait a minute. If that church need a prophet and you got two and you see they need prophets to be poured, why can't you lend the anchor for a prophet for a little while? That's right. If you see that church is going down because they don't have an apostle or a pastor or a prophet or a teacher, why can't you lend a teacher instead of letting the church just sing? We are here to reconstruct other ministries as well. I had a ministry say they're going to reconstruct us. I said, okay, help reconstruct us. But I'm not going to let you reconstruct us because we don't need no reconstruction right there. That's right. You can help Amen. build, but you ain't going to reconstruct. Man, ain't tearing down, breaking up nothing. This is the way they started. That's right. But if we see someone sinking, then we will help build them up. We will help minister with them. If somebody is lacking, we will help send what they need. And that's only out of the spirit of God. But there's so many churches that won't share. They won't share. And they won't even ask you that they need a musician or they need a, a usher or they need a, a, a devotion leader. They got one person doing everything instead of asking for help. And that's not what God wants. If you want your ministry to be in action and to work, you need to work together. Now, if you don't agree with the ministry, they don't bother the ministry. That's some ministries I don't agree with. They blowing smoke and blowing fire and smoking cigarettes and doing the hollow movies. I'm, I'm telling you, I've been there. I won't ask them for help because I don't believe in that. I don't believe in all that head and toe and then stop blowing smoke and putting wine in. That's not me. You ain't spitting in my face. I'm sorry. Watch it. It happens. There's a lot of churches that spit in your face and blow fire and Act like they are. No, not me. But if you really are sincere and you really need help in ministry, don't be afraid to ask. But if you got a gift and you have nowhere to use it, don't be afraid to use it in another place. And this is what the Lord is telling me to tell somebody. If you see somebody that is, is like our, I don't want to say the person's name, but he comes here once in a while and he's in the wilderness, don't have nowhere to call his home. We are here. We are here. You can use your gift here. We're not trying to adopt you. We're not trying to keep you. We're not trying to have you sign your, your life over in blood. We're not saying pull the nails out your hand. All we're saying is if you want to use your ministry gift, you can use it here. And that's how every church should be. There should not be one church that says you can't testify. You can't praise the Lord. You can't read a scripture. You can't give a word. There's no such thing as can. If you want your ministry to work, if you want the ministry to be active, you cannot say can. Stop the can't syndrome. Make a day. There's some Saturdays we're not fine. You can have Come on. It's all right. Just don't destroy the place. I'll be here watching. But you want to give everybody opportunity because you never know your day you might need. Think about it. People in Israel helped David. And when David became king, he blessed them. Yes, he did. So don't underestimate who you might help when they in need. Because they may have your blessing. They do have your blessing or they want to come for you to help. So I want to thank you for helping me. Because I know God is going to bless you for helping me. All right, this is it. This is what happens in the body of Christ. Many people take their office and anoint it to a place where they are really not needed, nor understood, and neglect the place that they are supposed to be. Because it looks small and not desirable. God is here and you need to be here also. This is where your blessing, this is where you blessings and breakthrough are. No matter what the past was, 
It is now a new day. Seize the moment. No matter what the past was, this is a new day. Seize the moment and make the ministry work for you, not against you. I don't care if it's not my ministry, anybody's ministry. If you dare, make that ministry work for you. Don't just be a statistic sitting in the room. Make it work for you. Let the pastor or the bishop or the preacher know, listen, I know I'm not a member of your church, but I got a gift of, of serving. And I would like to use my gift to serve. Fine. Don't just sit there and not use your gift of service. And I guarantee you, if they don't let you, we're always here. Amen. And you don't have to stay, but you can use your gift. Nobody should have a gift from God and not be able to use it somewhere. Yes, yes, yes. There's no big you, no big me. Like I said before, I say it again. We will always have testimony service while we're open. We will always give people a chance to express themselves. Because apostles gave us chance. And gave us time. So we got to do the same thing in the spirit of Christ. That's right. Because there's no big me. And there's no little you. There's just respectable me. And there's respectable you. As long as you stay respectable, we stay respectable. As long as you stay useful, we'll be useful. But when it comes to that nonsense, it ain't happening. Why? God don't allow it. We never get dirty. We don't have to argue and put people... God just removes people. That's right. We know. I tell you, we have. I say, Lord, and they're gone. Two weeks later, like, where they go? Where they go? Yep. They Never had to put them, put them up. Certain ones. So I guarantee you, if you want your ministry to work, and you want your ministry to be in action, make sure you have all areas closed. Don't start ministry without your areas closed. See, I, I'm going to tell you again, our ministry started before we even left. <laughs> our ministry started way before we even left. Yes. We, were, we were so hesitant to leave that the God had to make a situation because we were not leaving. Just like the bird in the nest, the mother had to kick the bird out because the bird don't want to fly on their own. They want to stay in the nest, so sometimes... You, God, you have to cause a situation. Yes. Just because nobody wanna. And then we can sell. And then the bird just flying really will go back to the mother and happy and lovely. And then they're doing their thing. And then go around and show the mother their kids. Mm -hmm. So the bird show the mother their kids. They're like, wow. Look at the flourishing. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for this teaching because ministry and action starts now. Now is your time to seize the opportunity to be more than just a statistic or to be more than just a person in the audience but to be somebody doing something for the body of Christ. No matter what small gift it may be, use it or lose it. Don't be ashamed. I don't care who look at me. Right. I'm going to say out of key, in key, with key, no key. I don't care. <laughs> I have a voice. Y'all don't know my testimony, but when I was on, on life support and when I couldn't breathe, my lungs collapsed, I couldn't breathe. I said, Lord, if you give me my voice back, I will use it for you. I ain't stopped saying it since. I don't care if it sounds nasty, hard, messed up, yeah. I'm going to use my voice for him. That's right. Because when I didn't have it, and I could just... <gasps> now I don't have to... <gasps> I'm going to use it for him. That's right. I don't care who don't like it. And if you don't want me there, I'll leave because I got my own church to use it at. Hello! You can't shut me up. But I can't shout there. All right, I go to my own. I can't say me. I go to my own. God opened up doors for you to be able to use what you got. Don't let nobody muffle you. The Bible said, muffle not the ox that thread of the corn. Muzzle it not. Because you need that corn. You stop it, you starve. You will starve. 
And you just need to realize that. So for those that are starting ministry or those that are already in ministry, the reason why the things are not going the way it should is because all five fall ministries are not in action. You have to have them all in action. Set it up. Fine. Search. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. You think Jesus just sat there and said, you 12 come? He went here. Saw that one. Saw that one. Saw that one. Saw that one. But you want everybody to just fly to you. No. No. See, the Lord will show you and send you who do it all day to work with you. And it's not your, your job to pull them. It's your job to know, pray, and wait. And God will send them when it's their time to come. You just got to make the atmosphere right for them when they come. And I'm going to close with this. Like I told you before, when I was at Brooklyn Tabernacle, I loved the church. That was the first time I ever saw prophecy. That was the first time I saw speaking in tongues. That was the first time I ever saw the anointing so high in my life. And I was like, Lord, why am I going here? I went there and I was flabbergasted. I never saw that before. And that's a big church. Yes. But the person was way down there. And it sounded like it was right next to you when they were talking. You heard it right here like they were right in your ear. I'm like, oh my. And then you hear another one on the other side interpret. It was amazing. And then all the thunder and not the music. It was just, you could hear just the people in tongues just thunder in the area. That was an experience I never experienced before. And I said, Lord, I thank you for taking me there. But if you've never been there, you will never have that experience. Why? Because you never had a chance to experience something like that. That's why it's good to go places. It's good to go places. Monday through Friday, stop sitting in the house eating cheese and bacon and go to church. <laughs> Get out! Go to church. You are all covered with the anointing to go to another ministry and hear some words. You know how to write and divide. I'm not worried about you being swindled or messed up. Go out, learn some stuff. And come back and share it. Why not? You can't learn everything here. That's right. You got to see things for yourself out here. Because see, you're not going to see foolishness here. But if you go somewhere else, you might see some foolishness and know what foolishness, foolishness is. Then you say, yeah, that's just what my bishop was talking about. I see it here. Look how they crackling and beckoning. And yeah, I see it. But you can't see it if you never go nowhere. Because you're not going to see backbiting and foolishness here. It's the way it's not going to happen. But if you go somewhere else, you can see foolishness and say, wow. Look at this mess. Look at this guy. Look at this mess. This is not right. Write it down and remember that. You will see some stuff, but you will never taste the water until you go out there and get wet. Amen? Amen. So remember, you know, it's, I'm never going to tell you not to go somewhere. You can always go somewhere. You can always go see some stuff because that's the only way you're going to learn. You are not going to learn more just being here. You can if the God let the opportunity arise, but you learn by visiting other places. I mean, I, I'm just crazy. Like that. I sat in synagogues. I sat there while they read the Torah and they walked around with the thing and they kissed the thing and I'm watching. I went to the to, to, to the Catholics. I sat there. I watched all that. I went everywhere. Why? Because I went to, I went to Judaism. I went to all that. I mean, I went to Buddhism. I seen all that crazy smoke and incense. I ain't like that. I ain't like to burn my eyes. No, but I've been there. Not to stay, but to observe. I sat in the back. I observed. I'm like, really? Y'all ain't never going to open up the New Testament? Y'all just going to say in them five little books? But I learned. I sat there and I looked at them and I ain't never disrespect them. I sat there. They gave me love and, you know, I'm like, wow. These, and they do Jews ain't bad. They, they cool people. Now I see too many out there doing the room, but it's okay. That's God chosen people, so they say. 
<laughs> Amen. But you got to not be afraid to test the water. Don't be afraid to test the water. Don't be afraid to sit in the synagogue for a couple of days, a couple of hours. And just see how they worship. Because one day in the, in the end times, you're going to need to minister to that Jew. And if you don't know their traditions, you can't minister. So you need to know some of their traditions. Then you can say, well, let me tell you about what I know about China. It's not right. And then you can explain. They say, wow, how do you know that? Because I was there and I was taught and I seen. And now the Lord's. Listen to this. Jesus had to sit amongst them before he could talk about what they knew it wasn't right. He didn't just automatically talk. He went there. He sat. And he said, wait a minute. That ain't right. I see this. Oh, I got to fix that. But how can you see if you never go? Amen? That's the word for today. Amen. There is